I'd like to say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahshah. Also give a double honest to LGMS, honest to Akim. Peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters that listen, the hopeful elect. And um, do a very quick lesson today to the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshah on, you know, who is the, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You know, that's a, the question that the disciples asked the Lord because uh, Matthew, the 18th chapter, because they were having a debate amongst themselves. You know, and what's the kingdom of heaven for those of you who don't know? The kingdom of heaven is power and rulership. Okay? And the Israelites, starting with the 144,000 underneath Yahweh Shai, rule this planet Earth and the universe, man. And have all our enemies in subjection. Okay? And the disciples were having arguments amongst themselves, debating which one of them were going to be the greatest. And then they asked Yahweh Shai, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? This is what he said. Let's find out through the spirit. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. At that same time came the disciples unto Yahweh Shai, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh Shai called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of the mo kingdom of heaven, man. And that's all of us. We all have to become what? Little children, man. That's what he told um, Nicodemus. You have to be what? Born again. Okay? That's what he said. Um, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, man. Becoming what? Little children. Man. Okay? Because a child is what? Matter of fact, there was a study on, um, I was reading on PSU, um, um, that edu.org, on why children are able to learn a second language faster than even adults. Okay? Penn State, this is a, um, a study they did at uh, Penn State. This is what they said. It says, not only do children grow and develop at extraordinary paces, but they also learn information quickly as well. A child who's exposed to multiple language at a young age has a much easier time processing and remembering the information they receive. But why is this? Why do they lose their ability as we grow older? Because why? Well, a lot of adults stay stuck in their ways, man. Another word for that is called pride, man. Okay? It says, um, according to oncology nurse Suzanne Robin in her article, why is it easier for a child to learn a new language than an adult? She lists that several reasons as to why children learn languages so easily. For a child learning language is a part of their brain chemistry. They are literally built to absorb information. They do this un in an unconscious state of mind. Man. Like they're learning and they don't even know it. Okay. So that's what we got to be built to absorb, man, and remain what humble. That's what the Lord was trying to express to the disciples, man. Humility and modesty goes a long way with the Heavenly Father, man. Long way. Man. All right. And there was also another instance when a child tried to come up with their parents. The parents wanted them, um, the Lord to pray over the children and the disciples rebuked them, man. And the Lord wasn't too pleased with that. We're going to read right now. Mark chapter 10, verse 13, I think. Mark 10, 13. And they brought young children to him that they should touch him, touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. You know, like, you know, bring something serious, basically, man. Don't bring these little children, man. Bring us somebody who has real ailments, real diseases. That's the spirit the disciples are coming in. I get these little kids out of here, man. This is not a parody or a joke. But when Yahweh Shai saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For, for of such is the kingdom of the Most High, man. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of the Most High as a little child, he shall not enter therein. So we got to be like that. Humble, modest, and you built to absorb information, man. 
because we're all literally being born again. All of us that come into this truth from the Yahweh Shai. Okay? Like Paul said, he considered all dung to win over Yahweh Shai, man. All what you learn in the world is dead. The Most High don't care about that. The scripture says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High, man. Okay? And one of the things he hates is pride. I'm going to read scriptures on that. Right? Let me read Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, because the Lord himself was humble. Right? Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the human called Jesus Christ, who being the form of the Most High, or the form of God, or power, thought it not Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The Son of the Heavenly Father came as a man through the seed of Joseph, all right, also, also the seed of David, okay, because he was from the house of David sperm man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient he's willing to do the will of the heavenly father man became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and he didn't want to go on the cross he prayed to the father three times can he move this cup away from him? and the father didn't answer his prayer so guess what he had to go ahead and do it he was obedient unto death like he said not according to my will according to thine will Verse 9, Wherefore the Most High also have exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. His reputation, his title, his rank, his title is above everybody in heaven and in earth. Okay? The Most High put everything underneath him for what he did for the children of Israel. But he had to be humble first, man, before he can get that glory. And we are walking on that same path. So we started out as children, man. And later on, you know, like the elders, you become what? Men. The more you grow, man. Okay. That's what the scripture says. Um, matter of fact, let me get Proverbs 18. That's what you got to start out as a baby. The scripture says you got to desire the sincere milk. And then after you get that milk, then you can eat that meat. Try the deep breakdowns. Because you start learning experience. Okay? But this says Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. It says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. Which means what? He's high-minded. He's proud, man. He thinks he's more important than what he actually is. None of us is important. The scripture says your righteousness is as filthy rags. So none of us can boast. And that's what the Heavenly Father hates the most. In the Proverbs 6 chapter. And before honor is humility. So before you can get that honor, you have to be humble. You have to be lowly as a little child, man. You have to be modest, man. Okay? And another way you be humble is what? You fear the Lord. The fear, the fear of the Lord and humility... It goes hand in hand. Okay? Constantly praying to the Most High, constantly repenting to Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, man, shows humility, man. Okay? Not boasting. Knowing that you didn't acquire this truth on your own, it had to be given to you. Alright? And understand that you also have what teaches, man. And showing what a great deal of humility and not really looking down on the other men that are coming after you. Okay, because we just read about the little ones. That's what the Lord said. Um, he that's greatest among you, let him be your servant. That's what he got down and washed the disciples' feet. Okay, I meaning you're supposed to serve your brethren, man. Okay, so he want that responsibility, man. Is you got to be a servant, like Yahweh Shai was. He had to be obedient unto death. Read another precept. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. It says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Like I just said, humility and fear of the Lord goes hand in hand. And that's going to give us riches. 
in the world to come honor, glory, and life. What life? Everlasting life. But in the world to come, man. Okay? But we have to start out as what? Little children. Humble, man. Before you can get that glory. Alright? Let me read this precept. Scripture in the Apocrypha that I want. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 12. If I can get this here, let's see. 10 verse 12, it says, The beginning of pride, or when you high minded, is when one departed from the Most High. That's the beginning that you know that a man is going off, man. The Spirit of the Most High start leaving you, start getting proud. And his heart is turned away from his Maker, for pride is the beginning of sin. And he that have it shall pour out abomination. Okay, because you feel like nobody can correct you or tell you nothing when you're proud or when you're high minded. You know, none of us could be that way, man. None. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. Yeah, like he had to humble Nebuchadnezzar because he got proud, man. And the most I was like, I'm the one who, um, allowed you to rule. I'm the one who gave my people over to you. You didn't do it of your own might. And Esau's gonna find that out real soon. This white man, man. So-called white man. Edom. Adawam. Red. The red man. He's gonna find out that he's nothing, man. He's nothing more than a cave beast that the Most High set up to get taken down, man. It says, um... The Lord have plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. And that's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. The scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek is the children of Israel. Because right now we're in a lower state. Right? The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away and destroyed them and have made their memorial to cease from the earth. And that's going to literally happen to Esau in the world to come. After he served his thousand years of slavery. Pride was not made for men. No furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Man. So pride was never made for the man, man. Okay? Because we all fall short. It says, they that fail the Lord are a sure seed. Alright? And like I just read in Proverbs, man. Okay? The fear of the Lord and humility goes hand in hand, man. That's going to lead to riches, honor, and life. And they that love him an honorable plant, they that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed, and they that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed, which are the two thirds. Okay, so scripture says pride wasn't made for man. And when you start getting proud, you start departing from your maker. Okay, and all of us can get proud, man. The scripture says knowledge puff it up. You see, but you gotta remain humble, man. That's where the most high put that thorn in the apostle Paul's flesh. So you can never get high-minded or proud. Okay? Because the Apostle Paul received a lot of revelations. Okay, and if you do get proud, man, you know, you got to humble yourself quickly, man. Just like Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a righteous king. So I'm going to read, close it out on this account. But he got proud at one, at one moment. You see? And let's see what happened. Second Chronicles chapter 32. Verse 22, I think. Second Chronicles 32, 22. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah from the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, when he sent that angel. I forgot, they killed over hundreds of thousands of Assyrians that wanted to attack Jerusalem at that time, which Hezekiah was a righteous king. All right? He prayed to the Lord, and Mosai sent a death angel down to kill hundreds of thousands of Assyrians. And from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem and the pre presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to death and prayed unto the Lord, Yahabashim Yashah, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. See? And he lived for 15 more years after that. Okay? So he just got delivered from the Assyrians and he got sick and the Lord prolonged his life. And he was magnified in front of everybody. This is what happened. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. 
for his heart was lifted up. So he started getting proud. He forgot what the Most High just did for him, man, delivering him from the Assyrians and also extended his life. He started getting proud, man. Therefore was the wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. So the Most High started getting in his behind, pulled out his wrath. And this is what Hezekiah did, a righteous man. And this is what we all got to do. Okay, like Yahweh Shai said, become his little children. This is what Hezekiah did. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. So he had to what? Humble himself, man. Become lowly, man. Repent, man. And acknowledge your deeds, your wrong deeds. Okay, and that's what we all got to do constantly. Constantly keep ourselves in check, man. Because we don't want to taste the wrath of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh So that, we can almost say, giving all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Hopefully this lesson was edifying. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom.